and welcome to this day. I want to bring you the word of the Lord. There's so much going on, so much has got my heart stirred up about the coming of the Lord, and I would like to speak to you about that today. Since 2020, it's been very clear to me that the Antichrist spirit in the earth has bared its teeth, and because of that, we feel a heightened awareness that we're living in the last days. I feel a heightened awareness that we're living in the last days and that the Lord is soon to return from the, for the church. We don't know the day, we don't know the hour, but we know it will be in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, like a thief in the night. The Bible tells us all these things. And so we want to be ready. The Lord's next return to the earth, he will not touch the ground. He will be in the air and we will meet him in the air. And the Bible says, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. And so my title for today is don't be deceived, be ready. Say that with me. Don't be deceived, be ready. All right. And so, um, I want to share this article with you. I believe I found it from the Jerusalem Post. I have it. I'll put it on the screen behind me. It says this. It says, when Hamas spokesman Abu Abida began a speech marking the 100th day of the war in Gaza, one confounding yet eye-opening proclamation escaped the headlines, listing the motives for the Palestinian militants groups, militant groups' October 7th massacre, massacre in Israel. He accused the Jews of bringing red cows to the Holy Land. Red cows to the Holy Land. Of all the things to fight about, they're fighting about certain colored livestock. Why does this matter? Well, in the Middle East, in Jerusalem, there is something called the Temple Institute. The Temple Institute has all of the items already built to reestablish the third temple that will be built on the Temple Mount, where the al Aska Mosque is right now, and all those items have been already prepared. And so you can go there, go to the website after church today, not during church, please, and you'll see those items exist. Why am I telling you that? Because one of the last things necessary in order to purify the priests and to purify the temple for the third temple to be built is a red heifer sacrificed and its ashes. And so the temple could be rebuilt now. They've been waiting forever for a red heifer. CBS News this week, or last week, did a hit piece on the red heifer. Go to YouTube, type in CBS News red heifer, okay? And so we want to be very aware that the Jewish anticipation and the Muslim anticipation of the last days is at a heightened, it's at a heightened state. Is that fair to say? And so there's an expectation that things are changing. There is a Jewish anticipation of the third temple to be rebuilt. Now, they're believing that based upon the Messiah that is to come, but the Messiah that they should have believed in already came. His name is Jesus. And so that is intentional. And in Numbers 19, the Bible talks about how a red heifer needs to be sacrificed to purify the temple at the building of the temple. Something happened. Next topic. Something happened yesterday and today that has not happened in my lifetime. It's significant. Put it on the screen here. For the first time in my lifetime, Iran has attacked Israel, and they didn't do it through their proxies, which would be Syria, Hamas, Hezbollah. They didn't attack that way. They sent drones and uh, inter 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 I'm going to say intergalactic, but <laughs> ballistic missiles. <laughs> they, wanted, they sent their own ballistic missiles and their own drone strikes against, against Israel yesterday. You say, well, they've been fighting over there for years. Yeah, they've not been fighting like this. And there's something significant about this that affects our view of the end. Um, it's a war that hasn't occurred yet in all of history. It's the Gog-Magog war, put it on the screen, of Ezekiel 38, 39. This war has never happened in human history. I believe there's a really good chance we'll see this war before the Lord returns. And you'll see these Old Testament names for current nations and how they will all join together. And you, I don't have time to read the whole book of Ezekiel 38, 39 to you. But all of these nations are mentioned that I have labeled. And it shows and tells us that all of them will march against Israel. And it's not Armageddon. I'm telling you this 
because right now, Iran, which is Persia, is directly attacking Israel. And the unique thing about the Gog Magog War is that Russia and Turkey and the North African nations that you see there get involved. I don't know about that yet. It doesn't seem clear to me, although those areas are becoming more and more radicalized. So what am I telling you? I'm telling you that right now, at the Golan Heights, Russia has staged more troops than they've ever staged before through their proxy, Syria. Are you hearing me? Iran is directly attacking Israel. Russia is staged at the border of Israel in the Golan Heights. Church, we are living in the last days. Is the war happening? No. Does it look like little dominoes are falling? Yes. There was never an alliance in my lifetime between Russia and the more militant or radicalized Muslim nations that exist today. And so church, the Bible says, comfort one another with these words. The Bible calls the coming of the Lord the blessed hope. We cannot afford to live without an awareness of the soon and imminent return of the Lord Jesus in the air to catch away the church. And the church says yes. And so Jesus talked often about the end of the world and how people in that day where there were so many signs would be mistaken about what they saw around them leading up to it, okay? And, and they would also become confused about who, who they could put their trust in because deception would be high. There is so much deception. The news used to be the news. Now the news is not really the news. It's like, is this really the news or not the news? Is this, is this real or is this not real? All the agenda of the Antichrist wants to do right now is diminish all of our confidences in all institutions. But there is one institution unchanging that we will not lose our confidence in, and that is the word of God. And the church says, yeah. There's many signs in the book of Revelation and in Ezekiel and in Daniel that need understanding because they're, they're symbolic and they're, 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 they're spiritual in nature. But Jesus also provided some more obvious things to watch for. He tells his disciples that the temple of Jerusalem at that time would be torn down. It happened. The Romans did it. And, 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 and they asked some questions. When will the temple be destroyed? And they didn't know the Romans would do it, but the Romans did do it. And two, what sign or what signal will you give us about the return and the end of the world? And in response, and this is in Matthew 24, and I'll read it in a second, um, Jesus describes some things that would take place in their lifetime and some that would happen later that would all point to the end of the world and their signs that we're watching for. And here's what he says, Matthew 24 and 4 says this, don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah. They'll deceive many, and you'll hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. These are the words of our Lord directing us about the end of the age. And, and Jesus says there's going to be a lot of Jesus wannabes. There's going to be a lot of me wannabes coming saying they are the Messiah. And we'd be tempted to trust in them to fix our messed up world. But Jesus said, don't be deceived. Many people in the last days will be deceived. Churches, and I love the church, and it's beautiful in all of its forms that preach Christ, but churches are falling like flies to the darkness and the, the, the deceptions of, of, of our world, and they are trading in biblical truth for cultural accommodation, and God is not pleased. And Jesus says, don't let that happen to you. Don't be deceived. Be ready. Amen, somebody. And so there are two big signs of our times, deception and war. War will be the norm in our world until the Lord returns. The Bible tells us so. There will be wars and lots of talks about wars. War, war, war. 
This is the march of our society. Our government, without any concern, seems to be marching us toward more and more wars like they can't stop themselves. And the reason they can't stop themselves is because the Bible tells us that's how it's going to be. The Bible says don't panic. So while I feel urgent, while I feel passionate, I'm not panicking because verse 6 says of the same chapter, yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. So nations will war against each other and people groups and tribes will war against each other. There'll be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. Jesus says there are more signs and these things are more signs that the planet that we're living on is not going to last forever. Like I said last week, and if you haven't watched last week's message, please do it. Like in a movie, when the bomb that they're trying to defuse gets closer to that nation, the ticking gets louder and the clicking away gets faster. And it really feels like we're living in a heightened time where the ticking and the, and, 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 and the movement and the sound of the end of the age is getting faster. One day the trumpet of God is going to sound and the church will rise. The dead in Christ will rise first and we will meet the Lord together in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. But until then, there's gonna be famine and war and conflict and uprisings and men hating men and geopolitical tensions and social and political unrest and natural disasters and climates that shift, all of this, but it's only the beginning. And then it says, and this is happening, we've been blessed in America thus far, but it's happening all over the world, Matthew 24 and 9. Then you'll be arrested and persecuted. Felt like we came close during COVID just, just a little bit. I, I prepared my mind for what we would do if we had to go to jail. Like I'm preparing my mind. What kind of, what would be effective jail ministry? How would that work? <laughs> preparing my mind during that time. Then you'll be arrested and persecuted and killed. You'll be hated all over the world. Do you not realize that the societal Drumbeat is everything is acceptable but Christianity. Do you not sense that? All is good except Christianity. Christianity is the uh, as an evil in the minds of those that would control the airwaves and control society. It is an evil in their minds. It says you'll be arrested, persecuted, killed. You'll be hated all over the world because you're my followers. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. The agenda of those trying to subdue Christian America, which if you, you know, regardless of whether they're lukewarm or not, of the 330 million people in the United States, 230 million of them identify as Christians. And the only way to destroy this nation is to cause the populace to turn on each other and hate each other and so for us, you know, living where we live and the time in which we live, that sounds like it could be a little bit out there. But for many people who believe in Jesus around the world in our generation right now, go look at the Voice of the Martyrs website. They are being murdered more now than ever for faith in Christ. It's out there pretty prominently. People are experiencing this. And we can see these things as a sign. People are turning away from, from God and they're hating each other. And they're seething unrest just underneath the surface of the world. It's important that we raise our children in the honor and the instruction of the Lord. The King James says the fear and admonition of the Lord, but it means honor and instruction of the Lord. Because the family is the thing that can be right. Don't count on government, don't count on schools, don't count on anything but the word of God in your home as the reality. And you can trust the church to preach the word of God. At least this church, as long as I'm alive. 
And so the Bible says this in verse 11, many false prophets, say false prophets. False prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold. I wanna deal with false prophets for a moment. Um, in 1870, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, there was a man named Charlie who really was not into the idea of Jesus being God. Jesus proved he was of other when he resurrected on the third day. Jesus claimed to be God. That's why they killed him. And so they didn't believe that. They thought it was way off. So he started making pamphlets. He passed them around to his buddies saying, Jesus was actually Michael the archangel in human form. And people started believing him and buying his magazine, which he called Watchtower. And bam, that's how Charles Taze Russell's Jehovah Witnesses got their start. They weren't happy with the Bible's take on Jesus being God. So they made their own translation and they tweaked John 1.1. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God is what the Bible says, but they put the word A in there. It says like this, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was a God. That one character shifts from monotheism to polytheism. They rewrote the story of God to fit their version of Jesus with many other wild, uh, non-biblical approaches to scripture. Do not be deceived. They're sincere. Don't be deceived. They believe it. Don't be deceived. There's so many good Mormons in our community. They are moral and godly people in the sense that they abstain from much of the wickedness that pagan culture says is good. But Mormon beliefs have been edited and shifted 3,000 times since they wrote the Book of Mormon. This book has been translated multiple times, but it remains unchanged from the New Testament and from the Old. 3,000 edits to take out some of the racist things in the Book of Mormon against Native Americans and black people. But this book remains unchanged. I'm pointing to the Bible on my desk here. I want to give you some things. And the average missionary riding the bike with a white shirt doesn't know this, but I'm going to give you some citations from the Book of Mormon, put them on the screen, and I want to read them to you. This is, and you can take a picture of this if you want to verify it yourself, please do. Mormon leaders have taught that Jesus' incarnation was the result of a physical relationship between God the Father and Mary. This is in their Journal of Discourses, Volume 8, page 115, Mormon Doctrine, page 547. Okay, the Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible teaches Mary was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. And what was conceived in her was of the Holy Spirit. It was not a physical relationship, right? Next one, Mormons believe Jesus is a God, but that any human can also become a God. This is in Doctrine and Covenants 132 and 20, Teachings of the Prophet Joseph Smith, page 345 to 354. Also, Mormonism teaches that salvation can be earned by a combination of faith and good works. The LDS Bible Dictionary, page 697. Christianity just teaches us that Christ is our all in all. You can never be good enough to get to God. You come to God and he makes you good. The only thing good in me is what the Holy Spirit does in me. We are not against morality, but we are against morality as a means of salvation. My salvation comes from the blood of Christ, the cross of Calvary, the sacrifice that he made for me, not whether or not I'm having a good day. I don't have enough good days to save myself. I need the one day that changes everything, the cross of Jesus Christ, the blood shed, the burial, the tomb, and the resurrection. That is what makes me clean before God, not my good behavior because, baby, it ain't that good. Not that good. We also don't believe that humans are gods. That would mean that, would mean all kinds of things. We are not God. We'll have glorified bodies one day when we go to heaven, but we are not gods. And Jesus says near the end, there'll be more and more deception. There'll be more and more people that make convincing cases. And what's really gathering steam right now is just general paganism and spiritualism, mysticism, and, 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 and UFO worship. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's like the, God's in control. And if the UFO, if the aliens show up, I'm going to be... Jesus, 
I'll learn the language and tell them Christ, Jesus, he's your hope. I don't really I speak good alien, but that's my. You're like, this is radical. Yeah, this is radical. This is, this is, this is radical. You're preaching hate. I am not preaching hate. Love everybody. But ultimately, if you read this book, it should shock you that the things it's saying are coming true in the world right now. It ought to be sobering. It ought to make you aware. The Bible tells us in the last days, the love of many will grow cold and people will be dying in their relationships through emotional hypothermia, just hardness, distraction, whatever it is. Don't be deceived, be ready. Matthew 24, 13 says this, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it and the end will come. Jesus is like, I know I'm putting a lot on you guys because this does feel like a lot, but we need to feel it in the light of missiles running toward the land of Israel right now. We need to feel it. In the middle of all these scary and polarizing realities, there's good news. You can make it through all this if you keep your eyes on Jesus. If you're not deceived, if you don't grow cold in your love. And the good news is that the good news will be proclaimed everywhere. And so from our lips, we ought to talk about Jesus. In our day to day, we need to talk about Jesus. We need to proclaim him in our little worlds so that the whole world is touched by the knowledge and power and glory of the risen King. Praise God, praise God. Matthew 24 and 23 says this, then if anyone tells you, look here, it's the Messiah, or there he is, don't believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders. In, my, in, in, the, in the college small group that meets in my house last week, I brought out all, just in a, they came and got me because they got off into something. They're like, you know what, we need, we need an adult in the room, <laughs> even though there are many adults. But I just compared the counterfeit of the Antichrist who will emerge when the church is gone, I believe. He counterfeits everything Christ does. And the Bible says for false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen ones. Don't be deceived. Be ready. 2.6 billion Christians in the world today are convinced and have been transformed by the power of the living Christ. Israel is God's timepiece. He has a covenant there, and much of what we see in the last days will involve Israel, including the seething hatred of all societies against this failing and unfaithful one little nation and people that God committed himself to many years ago. For some reason, Israel is called the light of the nations. And we don't worship Israel, we worship Jesus. But no, the Bible tells us that everything will be coming there. And you need to be ready. I remember as a child listening to old men telling me that these days would happen. And they, I remember, I remember uh, Renee's grandfather looking at me and saying, and if you're alive in those days, lift your voice and tell them that the Lord is coming. And I am telling you right now in faithfulness to God and to that old man that the Lord Jesus is returning one day and we need to live ready and don't be deceived.